I'm Flimpy Seeds. I got another garden bed ready. Super excited. The curly bed is prepared and ready for root veggies. Yeah, root veggies! The far one I'd still like to add a little bit of dirt to because you need the dirt to be like a foot deep or more. Real dirty. <laughs> so we're gonna toss some carrots and beets, rutabaga, and maybe some herbs mix in between and radishes because I heard they're a good companion plant for parsnips. Silver's not my favorite, but we should be able to see it in the garden. We're kind of late on planting our stuff, but I think summer here is super long and kind of goes forever. So um, we have that on our side. <laughs> I was buying popsicle sticks to make the flags. And I thought, but why would I buy popsicle sticks to make the flags when we have sticks here? Already, I mean, this just seems like giving money to stores that you don't need to give money to, you know? Little flag, Detroit red beets. These beets, uh, seeds we got at a meetup, a homesteaders meetup. So I'm super pumped to use these because these are actually local heirloom seeds. So let's put them in the ground. Okay, so let's make a little divider that's the length of the, or the width of the garden. And we'll place them every two feet. Preemptively. Preemptively. Yep. So that's about two feet. We can rearrange them based on what else. Um, that's probably reasonable. Yeah. I see what you're doing. See what I'm saying? Here, I could bring these to you so you don't have to walk back. Sweet. Oh, just hang on to it. What do you think so far, hmm? I might have to go closer. You don't like that one? No, we're going to use it, but I think we won't have enough. For this row? Or both of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we do. Yeah. I'll pick that up Eight, later. Nine. Okay, we can. That was in the stack that I was making to move somewhere else later. Shut up. Okay, what do you think? I think that's perfect spacing. It looks really nice. Isn't that cute? Yeah. And I like the idea of just throwing a stick down. Because yeah. I'm not going to move the stick. No. Maybe we can move that one. Hmm. There we go. There you go. All right, now we're divided. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Oh shit. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. We need one more. We need that stick. Yeah, we need the stick back. The sappy one? Yeah. Or another one. We'll use the stick there every four inches they need to be apart. Three. Uh, is that good? Yeah, that's fine. They're a little bit over. Lots of no one's using a ruler here, Aaron. Definitely not. They're going to be a foot apart or something? The rows? Yeah. Yep. For some reason. Probably for nutrients. Yeah, so they're not uh, stealing them from each other. Okay. 
for her section. Detroit bread. We'll do three seeds per hole. Sure. Oops. Those little tan things right in there. I'm trying to point. Those little tan things. That's beet seeds. I know they look like little rocks, but that's what they are. Go to bed, little guys. You're going to wake up and be a big beet when you grow up. We're going to enjoy your beet grains also on salads. Then they cut Brian's hair. Do you like it? I like it. I might put some diatomaceous earth around this one. Dang old ant fest everywhere. These ants are really doing it. All right, you want me to plant basil? Yep. Let's see how these dirty old Walmart seeds work. Yeah, so this is the basil. Something I liked about it was that it says that it's USDA organic. <laughs> but we know that the USDA never lies to anyone and also forces farmers to burn their crops. Am I even allowed to say that on camera? Well, they didn't skimp on the glue on this at least. They want their seeds to be nice and tight. How do you open these things? It doesn't even feel like there's anything in it. Ah, I found a corner. I found its weakness. There we go. That opened the whole bottom. How else am I supposed to get these out? Can't you format that hole? Yeah, I could try. I got big fingers. These things have been microscopic, right. the seeds that I've what seen. Do? All right, I'm gonna pry this little hole open and see if I can't get something out. Holy smokes, these things are microscopic. Basil. Basil. Look at these little, little turkeys. Oh yeah, they're little. That'll probably be enough for this entire area. And there's mm -hmm. a ton more in there. Oh, we thought Walmart ripped us off. <sighs> yep. So we're gonna plant these in the side here. We're doing a little companion planting. Are these guys good companions? And these guys need to be four to eight inches apart. So I'm gonna use my hook 'em horns like that. There we go. That's really pretty deep there, hook em. There you go. See that? That's like perfect spacing. Like that. There you go. Let's see. Yeah, I'm only gonna put them a quarter inch. All right, so I'm gonna start here. And I'm gonna do, oh, that one's a little deep. Okay, there we go. There we go. And cover that one. And this one. Yep, all right. My gosh, I need like a freaking microscope to make sure I put enough in the holes there. There we go. So this is gonna be delicious basil. We're gonna enjoy this on all sorts of dishes. Maybe even some nice beverages as well. Ooh. Like kombucha with a little basil and cucumber or something. Might be nice. Or maybe radish and basil. That might be interesting. I think, what was that basil one I used to make? Basil ginger? Forget. Basil. We're just getting back in the kombucha loop. It's awesome. Like, so good. Mm -hmm. Better than drinking alcohol. I love it. There's your romance carrots right here. All right, I think these are all kind of the same in the sense that they need a good amount of space. So they need like four inches, three to four inches between them and about a foot apart. Whew. 
Oh, those are microscopic too. These little romancers. All stuck to the glue. They always say to thin carrots out. But we thought, hey, why don't we plant them so they're not like crazy close together so we have to thin them out less. Good Aaron's technique. A little tap on the bottom. Hmm. That's awfully generous. So we sprinkled diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous? Tenacious. Diatomaceous. Diatomaceous earth. <laughs> Around this bed because it was like ants everywhere. Little, like carpenter ants. Little highway. Carpenter ants? I think they were carpenter ants. Yeah, because they didn't really, like the ants in Texas, the fire ants, they like, they'll go and find you and try to kick your butt. These have no attitude at all. They're just all like, oh, I'm just here to eat wood. I'm just here to eat wood. Don't mind me. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. <laughs> Pardon. Pardon me. All right, what do you got? Let's see, half inch, three to four inches. So I mixed up one teaspoon of fish emulsion with one gallon of water. And this is gonna be the first set of fertilizer that we're using on this. I put it in this pressure sprayer. It's never been used for anything but this. Literally, I just filled this up moments ago and this is its maiden voyage. So far, I'd have to say that it's spraying at a really nice even rate and uh, I'm liking it so far. Now, fish emulsion, kind of like kelp and seaweed is uh, an additive that you can add to the gardens. It's something that Native Americans used to use long ago and even in current times to add fertilizers and uh, omegas and all sorts of good yummy stuff that the plants use to grow big and healthy. Yummy. So one gallon is supposed to be able to cover about 250 square feet of garden. So you just lightly water it in when planting and so that's what we're doing and i need more pressure i just pressurize oops we're not going to put anything but fertilizers in that thing we're going to do our best not to use gnarly chemicals um which we understand will probably make our yields lower yada yada but maybe maybe not um, if you have a balanced environment, bugs and stuff won't be as bad. Um, I don't know. It's all an experiment test, guys. I've been planting uh, herbs along the edges of this garden bed, and uh, now I'm gonna toss in some Swiss chard. Oh, you're still there. What do you think? It's working good. There he is. Over there. So focused. Making love to his wife through loving the garden. It's a beautiful thing. She recognizes his efforts. She is Fish emulsion. <laughs> this 
This also is a foliar, so you can put it directly on the leaves with no problems. A foliar? Foliar. Hmm. I'll have to mix another batch here in a second. I'm about out. That thing's awesome. Yeah. Already got little um, flowers on the serranos here. Yes. Pretty happy about that. Yeah, we're running out. You hear it sputtering. These little guys. I want to mulch this area. Yeah, we should. We'll keep it more moist. Yeah. More planting to do. Let's go. So we've got another garden that we're going to put in behind these curvy ones just around here. We're going to swoop the whole way around it and we'll probably put um, squash and pumpkins in there also. Uh, but now I'm going to work on this little bed that we put the diatomaceous earth on. Um, let's throw some squash in here and uh, just get some food in the ground and then we can worry about getting more beds made. Um, but yeah, this bed's ready, so let's plant in it. Looks like rain. Smells like rain. It's like super humid, which is uh, kind of nice. If, like It's like almost like you can taste the humidity of the air. I like to make funny labels to see if Brian notices them. Cute, cute, cute. Yeah, cute. He's cute. Yeah, That's a cute. good bed. Yeah, baby. I love this setup. Yeah, about a quarter gallon or so left. See, I gotta go mulch the tomato area now. Cool.